This is the Dextron Power 8.2 kilowatt hybrid inverter. It's been in here now for about a year, and at the moment it is off, so we just go and turn it on. It is in an off grid mode at the moment, so there's no AC power to it, it's only the battery and uh, the solar panels. There we go, now it's the inverter running. So one year review. Now this inverter uses about 70 watts in standby mode, which is quite significant looking at other brands. I'm currently running it at a five kilowatt battery bank, so in a 10 hour night, it's actually draining 700 watts out of my 5 kilowatt package, which is quite a lot. And another issue I have too is that uh, I'm using a generator to either top off the batteries or run some utilities. So the generator is running up to 30 amps fine. So I'll put that in here in the settings. And the solar array is charging with 20 amps. So the 20 amps set for the solar, and I got 30 set for the utility. Now the problem with this is that if there is solar power available, it will actually, if you're running the generator at the same time, pull 50 amps out of the generator if the solar isn't producing 20, which is ridiculous. So basically it trips out my generator. If there is no sun now, for instance at night, it will stay at the 30. But as soon as there is a little bit of sun that will ena enable the MPPT, it will actually overload the generator. A couple of ways to get around this is to set solar priority or solar charging only for the batteries. The inverter came with this Wi-Fi data logger thing, which is um, quite useful. You can use your mobile phone to set up settings on the inverter itself. And also you have access to this um, DES monitor website where you can track how much um, the generating and different parameters. One issue there I found was that it will not show any power return to the grid if you're using it in in hybrid mode. Unfortunately this thing lasted for about a year and now it's only a power line. So I opened it up to do a bit of testing but it seems that there's some circuitry that's burned out which is a shame. I contacted them for um, Another one, but um, support is quite lacking. I mean, you you can get ba you can get to support, but they won't really answer the questions you're asking them. They are just seeming to run around in circles. It seems telling you to try things you've already tried, even though you told them before. So it is quite frustrating. And of course, the lack of documentation. This is the only manual I have, which is very very limiting you know and uh, I've had some strange fault codes already I had fault code 9 the other day fault 9 it says bus soft start failed that's all it does so I could not get any charge to the batteries from the solar panel and I could not turn the inverter on so I don't know it's a bit strange this at the moment it's just in standby Odd. It says it's pulling zero amps from the battery. Another thing I forgot to mention if you have AC power connected and you have it set up to only charge the battery by solar 
what happens then is that before the sun is efficient or if there is a high load on the inverter it will start those three heavy fans that are underneath here and they are solely running off the battery and I've seen this a couple of times I've asked support for this it actually drains the battery so say you have a rainy day you're connected to AC power you're hardly producing any solar input it will drain the batteries if you have set it to CSO or OSO on um, the uh, battery charging priority now. 16 so I've got s solar and utility and if you have it set to only solar it will drain the battery if there's no sun and on CSO which is uh, solar priority it um, will also do the same thing if there is a little trigger of um, sun just to kind of enable the MPPT but not sufficient sun to charge. So we have a little bit of solar now, 76 volts. I think 90 is the threshold. But I'm not sure, I can't really find anything where it says start up voltage for the MPPT yeah it's 90 and it stops flashing there it seems that is the start of voltage and it's now changed from red to or purple which means now it is charging so about 300 watts at the moment it says so the BMS is telling us that it's actually drawing 90 watts it's not charging at all I just turn the inverter off for now and we'll see what happens. So you see the power drops about 30. So it seems like the MPPT alone before it can get any PV input, it's about 50 watts usage. So now the inverter is off and the PV array is off, the only battery connected. So I'll turn on the solar. So now, this is what's happening. The inverter tries to turn on, or the MPPT, sorry, turns on for a moment and it drops out. And this keeps on happening now for about half an hour, which sounds really bad for the relays or whatever. And it's getting more frequent the more the sun rises. So just go and turn the inverter on now and see what happens because it should be around 90 volts now on the solar. It's doing some weird stuff here, you see. I mean, now the inverter is on. And it just doesn't start. So it seems like it's just throwing out the inverter completely. If the 
there's a little little bit of power from the solar array to the MPPT. So what does it do now? I have no idea. So it's on at the moment, but it keeps on coming and going. 132 volts it says. I turn it off, back on again to see. It stays on. So it does this crazy stuff. I don't know what's going on here. No, it doesn't do anything at all. So, if I turn off the solar now, off, back on again, I can stay on now. I'll just wait for the inverter to go on. Alright, so we have the inverter, turn the PV array on, I think that should keep it on. Seem to work, yeah. No charge at the moment. Sixty eight volt amps, zero watts with. That is pretty much a standby inverter usage, so that should be reflected here too, but I don't know. And you see here now that the MPPT has pulled the power down, the voltage down to 90. But it isn't sufficient to charge at the moment. That's basically the drain of the battery. So if you have the inverter off, and the sun is rising, weird stuff happens. And if you leave the inverter on, you drain the battery. So that's why I have this timer, three minutes off, if there is no uh, power consumption to save the battery. But of course, that causes troubles when um, the sun is rising, if the inverter is off. So ideally, there should be a way to to have the MPPT running flawlessly without the inverter. Because at the moment, I mean, I don't need to use the inverter. I simply want the MPPT to charge the batteries, which works fine when the sun is higher. But as the sun is rising, it just causes mayhem for about half an hour to an hour. It sounds bad, it can't be very good for anything really, clicking on and off, on and off. So the solution for me at the moment is to turn the inverter on as the sun is rising, to avoid this relay clicking in and out, and then turn it off once the sun is high enough to, to drive the MPPT. Otherwise, I don't know, it's um, a powerful inverter. It seems to deliver a good punch. I've, I've tested it up to about 5 to 6 kilowatts and it seems to be steadily supplying. It's just the drain of the battery when you use AC power not to charge the batteries. So the box inverter will actually pull the power from the batteries and it will essentially drain them down if there is no sunlight and the standby power consumption of the inverter is quite high, about three times higher than other brands. The menu is very simple. Another issue I find is of course the communication protocol, if you want to hook that up to something else than this broken data logger. You need to set it in the settings on the battery type. Unfortunately that messes up my batteries. So 
I have to use user a user um, or oh, whatever you call it basically I put in the voltage and everything myself because my batteries aren't exactly following the specs of lib and lick whatever they call it and so basically lib and lic that is lithium batteries which predetermines the voltage settings which goes above or below my batteries but that is the only way to set the protocol if you don't want to use the data logger lib is the 232 232 um, protocol and the lic is the 432 protocol I haven't tested that, but that's what I've read anyway. There's nothing in the book about this, but uh, the internet is full of wonders. Give it a second thought. If you're going to use the Dextron power in an off-grid environment, I would stray away from this one. I know this is a generic brand. I've seen loads of similar inverters, hybrid inverters, with a different sticker on. I've even seen some painted blue that looks like it's a Victron energy inverter and it's the same Chinese stuff. I might need to just replace this fella for a more expensive, more reputable brand just to get what I want, you know. I, I, I can't have this drainage of the battery. I can't have this clicking in and out of the solar. I can't be messing around with all this on the Arduino just to get this thing to work the way I need it to work. So yeah, thanks.